Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm wearing a wig today because I hate my haircut. I've been trying to make the best of it. This is really irrelevant to the video, but it's tradition, okay? Since I've had my channel, I always started off by talking about my hair for some reason. It's not on purpose. I never planned to do it, but for some reason I always have to mention something about my hair. So a lot has changed over the years, but apparently not that. You know, it's, it's good to be getting back to my roots. Roots. Hair. Ha! Huh. So funny. Speaking of roots, I scalded my head. I have a really funky haircut going on right now. It's not even, it's not symmetrical. The sides, like my face frame is just gone. I was touching my hair up because I had red and blonde hair. There was just some new growth that I needed to bleach so it would match the colors. And at the same time, I wanted to fix up a few areas that, you know, started to get a little ugly looking. I was mainly gonna do that with toner to like get it to not be brassy anymore. But for some reason, I completely went brain dead and decided to leave the bleach in for the same amount of time on my whole head. On every part. I was leaving it in for a good amount of time for some of the areas that were darker and the sides that were already really blonde did not need the bleach in there as long as I left it in. It's supposed to only be in there a little bit, but no. I left bleach in it for just as long as I left it on the brown side. And when I realized what I had done, it had already been too late. When I went to wash the bleach out, my hair went with it. It just... It just left me. It was done. But honestly, I feel lucky. I feel like I should have had a hair problem like this way sooner. I started dyeing my hair and messing with it when I was like 13. And so to make it this long without ever like severely damaging my hair and it staying good and strong and able to change colors as much as I did for all of these years, that's pretty good, you know? If I'm gonna lose a chunk of my hair, at least I got a good over 10 years of messing with it first. It was just the side that was blonde that got messed up. So there is some areas on this side that are super short compared to this side. It's so messed up. I have no clue how to work with wigs. I know this probably looks terrible, but it makes me feel a lot better. Now that I got that out of the way, this video is pretty, you know, simple, but I went to a reptile expo for the first time since, uh, I don't know, since 2018? 20, I don't, it's been a long time since I've been to a reptile expo. I really don't remember the last time I've been to one. And it was super fun. A lot has changed. I noticed that the prices for a lot of snakes have gone up a lot. So I don't know what it is about hog noses right now, but I got my hog nose for like maybe $150. And now it seems like the cheapest one is like 400. I don't know why they're so expensive right now. But I filmed some footage at the expo and I just wanted to share it with everyone. Sorry, I had to close my door. There's a lot of commotion going on. So if there's background noise today, I apologize. I'm doing my best I can to pause talking when that's commotion and wait until it's over to start talking again. But it might still kind of pick up. I have a little brother who has special needs and I'm currently sharing a home with him. So it can be a little unpredictable here. Um, we'll just, we'll leave it at that. Anyway, the expo was in Corpus Christi and it was super fun. I stayed overnight up there. It was really weird going to an expo now with a different mindset than I used to have because the last time I think I went to a reptile expo, pretty sure, was back in like 2018. And that was when I would go and I would bring home like another animal every month. I was really going at it hard with bringing home a lot of different animals very rapidly and I'm not doing that anymore. I do have one new guy, but that's the first new animal that I have brought home since 2019. So I'd say I've slowed down just a little bit. You know, I don't live on my own right now. I have very limited space. And on top of that, I just don't wanna promote what I used to do. I don't think it's necessarily wrong to own a bunch of animals. I mean, breeders do it all the time. They have hundreds of reptiles and I'm not suddenly gonna switch and say like it's bad, but for where I am right now, I don't need to have a billion animals. And I'm not saying I don't have a lot already. I, I do still have a lot. I'm just saying I don't need to be bringing home one every month. Bringing home one new animal in four years is pretty good for me. <laughs> you get the point. I do still plan in the future to get more animals, but with that in mind, going forward, I I really do want to start doing rescue first. I feel like since I was just diving into the hobby for the first time when I started my channel that I went really deep into going to just breeders only because at the time there was very specific morphs I wanted. They needed to be healthy. They didn't need to be rescues because I was just starting and I didn't need to on top of that have a bunch of animals that were being rescued for all these potential reasons. So I wanted them to be healthy. I wanted to raise them from babies. I wanted specific morphs or specific species and you know you can't really necessarily pick and choose as much as I was doing when you're rescuing. If you're looking to rescue an animal
level. You tend to not be as focused on their exact morph or an exact age and tend to be more open sometimes to like some having different health issues or coming from a bad background that need a little extra work. And I just wasn't at a place where I wanted to start doing that at the time. I needed to just get straight from the source, straight from these people that I trusted. Sometimes it went a little wrong, but I was trying my best to get very healthy animals and go from there because I was still learning. So now that I've had all these years with these animals, I really sat down and thought about it and going forward, I want to look at rescues first. Like first and foremost, if I'm looking to bring in a new animal into my care, I will look at rescues first. Look and see which animals are needing to be adopted, ones that need homes. Instead of just buying solely these like expensive high-end morphs of different kinds of snakes and strictly buying from breeders. That doesn't mean I won't be buying from breeders. There's still definitely a lot of species that I would love to own that I don't think I'm going to get lucky enough to find up for adoption, but it's all going to be on a much slower scale and it's all going to be paced out better because this is all talking future tense right now. Like we're talking in the future when I move out. I'm not buying a bunch of animals to bring into this home. I brought one into this home in the last four years and I think that's as much as I can get away with here. I'm just, just now finally getting better with my mental health. In the past two months, everything has changed so much for me. I mean, it's all been a gradual process. Everything in the last four years has been leading up to this and it's all been part of my journey to get here. So it's not like I'm saying I didn't do anything for four years and then all of a sudden in two months, everything changed. It's just the most significant changes happened in the last two months. Everything else for four years was a lot more gradual, slow process mentally. A lot of it took place in my head. It was a lot of just mental work and it was so slow. I mean, up until two months ago, I was not showering very consistently or washing my face very consistently, all that kind of stuff. Like my hygiene was getting better last year, but still nowhere near like ideal until like the last two months. Like so much has changed in my last two months. My It, it was finally like I got to a place where I suddenly could have the capacity to start enjoying my hobbies again and start having like a passion for things and to start also taking care of myself like beyond just my most minimal daily needs. So it's finally just kind of all been exploding for me and taking off these last two months where the world around me is just opening up. So I'm not all of a sudden just going to be like, okay, now I'm ready to start taking in a bunch of animals. I still also feel guilty getting more animals because of the ones that I had to leave behind when I went to rehab. There was only a limited number of like space here so they wanted me to size down about half of my animals and it was a really hard choice to make. I had to rehome so many so it feels wrong to get more ever again. I know this is a hobby that I really really do enjoy and it's a passion of mine that just makes me feel like I'm able to connect with the world so much more than anything else ever. Like art and creativity and music are like the only other things that make me feel alive like working and connecting with animals do and I am so fascinated by reptiles so I know I still have a future where I'm going to be working with them and taking care of them and I want to bring more into my care so there's going to be a point where I'm going to have to accept what happened in the past and just take it with me in the future to not make those same mistakes like I'm never going to get in a place again where I ever have to sacrifice my animals unless it's like some unexpected if I like if I have some unexpected health thing it's beyond my control but I'm just saying I've learned a lot of lessons from that time in my life it was the most insane craziest just overwhelming time of my life ever and it took literally these last four years to sit in retrospect and just like absorb everything and really be able to to really realize everything that happened and sit with it and actually decide how I felt about everything. Things took off so fast with my YouTube and things took off so fast in that relationship and I had such limited life experiences outside of that. I feel like all of a sudden the switch just flipped and it was like every day I was waking up and just like tackling everything that was happening around me in the day at that moment just to get through the day to fall asleep and do it all again. It was like every day I woke up there was like 50 new things that I've never had happened before happening and I was just taking it all in and trying to handle it as best as I could. I never had the time to actually sit and see how it was affecting me or decide how I truly felt about things or to make my own real honest decisions about things. I was just in survival mode by the end of it where it was just so overwhelming and so 
overstimulating. <laughs> I wish things would have happened a lot slower. I would have been able to handle things a lot better if it wasn't just so fast. Like meet a guy and move in with him two weeks later. My YouTube goes from a hundred thousand to a million within six months. Like it was just all so fast. So I did my best, but now I'm gonna take what I can from all that experience and going forward I don't want to repeat the mistakes I made along the way so I'm gonna be smarter about it this time. With all that aside I just wanted to kind of talk about where I see my future with bringing more animals into my care. If I don't talk about that I don't want it to come across like I'm just suddenly like gonna be taking more in now that I'm doing YouTube. It's not gonna be that way. I'm gonna be a lot more mindful of my decisions when I decide to bring a new animal in. I'm gonna take my time and not just like go get it just because I can afford it. That's all again in the future. My main goal right now is to get out of my house and to move out again and then to upgrade all of these guys into some cooler enclosures first. Like get my animals and me situated first before I even ever consider bringing anything more in. Again except the one little guy I brought in. Well we'll get there okay that was my one the one thing I allowed myself and I thought about that for like six months before I did it I was very slow pace even though they were cheap and easy to get I waited a long time <laughs> that's that so we're gonna go ahead and look at the footage now and then we'll talk a little more <laughs> These guys were so cute. I absolutely love them. Look at their little faces. I had to give them just a tiny little boop on the head. Just, just a little one. He was really friendly. I liked him. He got really big eyes. <laughs> I miss toast so much guys. One day I'm gonna have a Kenyan again. I miss them so much. Look at their goofy faces. I love them. <laughs> My current obsession right now is frogs. If you follow me on Instagram, you might know that, or Twitter. I'm just like always posting about frogs now, but <laughs> I really love them. And these guys were all so adorable. Look at him go, he's so good. Also, I'm really obsessed with isopods right now. I love them. They are so, I don't care what you guys say, roly polies are cute, okay? <laughs> like, look at him. He's looking right at me. I love him. But the one who really kept capturing my eye was this tomato frog. I just, I could not stop looking at him. I was in love with him. We were making eyes at each other. Like I tried to move on, but in my heart, I just kept thinking about, thinking about him.
one of my dream snakes, a white-lipped python. So beautiful, I love them. And here's a very chunky leopard gecko. They were very thick. He liked to nibble on me a little bit, but that's okay. He's allowed to take a bite. The teeniest, tiniest little blue tongue skink ever. I loved them. Bindi was already an adult when I bought her, so I never had her when she was this tiny. I just couldn't stop imagining a tiny little Bindi. This guy had the coolest corn snake morphs. I loved them. My boyfriend actually bought this king snake. He's been wanting a snake for a long time, so got a cute little snakey. Oh my gosh, I wanted this guy so bad. He gave me clown vibes, just a little stripe around his nose. I just, he was so cute. More cute little frogs, my obsession. Look at him go! I love him! A very happy gecko. This is a really big hog nose. I don't- she just- she was a long girl. She was good.
And look at this little guy's face. Like, sorry my hands shake really bad. I have other Stanlows. But their face was so cute. I loved them. They had the cutest little old man face. And that's just about everything I saw while I was there. Um, there was a lot of ball pythons and a lot of crested geckos. There wasn't as much variety as I was used to, but there was still plenty of things to see. Not at all to say that it was bad. It was really great. But yeah, that's about everything. And I thought that I was gonna film more after this, but I kind of changed it up and split it into two videos. So that really concludes this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the footage and I will see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye.